Parliament. And I think it is uh, a time in the entire year of the European Parliament when disabled people and the fight for the rights of disabled people are most visible, are most heard. And I know that this morning in Strasbourg you've been making sure they're very loudly heard, not just to us in this Parliament, but to the people of this great city. And I know many of you have also been meeting with my colleagues from the different political parties uh, of the different countries in one-to-one -one bilateral meetings, and we will continue to do that, uh, and I encourage you to do so. But I want to just reflect on some of the achievements that have followed from your demands in previous freedom drives in previous years. You know, I won't ever forget the fact that the European Network for Independent Living uh, lost its European funding and was said not to be a priority for European funding uh, in terms of having a network and that was wholly wrong and we campaigned with you to get that funding restored and that has happened and I'm deeply proud of that. Uh, I know too that you said that the whole concept of independent living had never appeared in European legislation, European policy or European programmes and you called on us to do that and we now have that within the policy programmes of the European Commission. We have had studies, we've put in European Parliament resolutions and the concept of independent living is really understood here because of your demands in a way that it wasn't before. Uh, we know, and you know, and we'll be discussing it in detail later, that the campaign for having European support for the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities has been strongly supported in this Parliament by resolutions of this Parliament and in lobbying by this Parliament. Uh, and I'm deeply proud of the role that this Parliament has made and that uh, the result of that is that it is the first human rights instrument in the history of the United Nations that the European community, the European countries together, have signed up to, not simply individual European countries. And that means a real big difference on disabled people's rights being recognised and understood and promoted in European legislation. It's a fantastic achievement that resulted from previous freedom trials. I am absolutely delighted, therefore, that you've come along with a new set of demands for us. Uh, and we're here ready to debate them, uh, we're going to listen to them, but I know that you know, uh, that you want to know, not just me, uh, but the other MEPs and their representatives who are in this room and who are listening and part of this debate. Uh, my message simply is to, to call on the European Parliament to support the swift ratification and implementation of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I would like to remind you is that we have more than 1.2 million disabled people in the European Union who are still forced to live in long-stay residential institutions and are segregated and excluded from their communities. Article 19 of the UN Disability Convention makes it clear that institutionalization of disabled people is a violation of their human rights. It sends a clear message to the governments that all disabled people have the right to live in the community with choices equal to others. And it is the first legally binding treaty which requires that governments develop a range of community-based services to ensure that disabled people can live independently in the community. Enjoyment of the right to live in the community is central to implementation of many of the rights in the UN Disability Convention. Only when living in the community can disabled people enjoy the right to work, the right to privacy, the right to an adequate standard of health, liberty of movement, and others. While some European countries have made progress towards developing quality services in the community. In others, around the European Union, the number of disabled people who enter the system of institutional care is still rising. It is therefore crucial that the institutionalization of disabled children and adults in the European Union and the availability of quality community-based services is put on the agenda of the new European Parliament and that action is taken now to ensure that community-based services are developed as a matter of priority and that the rights of disabled people who are locked away in institutions are given the attention that they deserve. 
The first step towards ensuring the right to live in the community is a Europe-wide ratification of the Disability Convention. And the next step is making sure that the rights set out become a reality for disabled people and that this happens without delay. We need your support, you as MEPs, in both parts of the process and sincerely hope that the European Commission and the European Parliament will be more resolute in upholding the rights of people with disabilities. Thank you. Tres there are very few hours of personal assistance available in France except for a few, uh, I would say, uh, uh, kind of intellectual elite. In France, the situation of people with disabilities is mainly looked at from a medical point of view. We are all uh, patients. Uh, so we think that to get out of the situations we have in France is to work altogether at European level. And we would like to have control of our own lives to, to live a life we choose. But in France, and I repeat, it's the segregation is officially still organized. Thank you. It's, it's terrible. But when you hear about daycare centers and sheltered housing, and uh, group uh, homes and, and blah blah blah. This is said in my country that it's an alternative to institutions. These are institutions and I would call for the European institutions like the Parliament and the Commission to be tougher and to be more demanding to the government of the member countries and make sure that not a single cent of European money goes into daycare centers sheltered housing, and anything of the kind which is not community service. And community service means to live in a normal place, as it was said so far, to have personal assistance all over Europe as a human right for us as disabled people to be able to get on the bus whenever you, we want, which means transport, uh, mainstream transport, which can accommodate disabled people and not a single cent going into any special arrangement or special facilities. I would very much appreciate if you pass on this message to your colleagues, Mr. Hewitt, in the Parliament and in the Commission. Thank you. Mr. Thank you very much for coming here to meet us. This is our fourth Freedom Drive, over 440 people who come from 21 countries with some demands that we will give to you, signatures from our campaign on personal assistance. We're here for our human rights. We're here hoping that, or uh, wanting the European community to ratify the United Nations Convention and to make sure the Article 19 is implemented as well as the others, the Article for Independent Living. And I was so surprised, I wasn't that old. I came to this to this hall and they said, so many of you sitting here around. I thought it would be a twenty It's fantastic. <laughs> Peace out.